Hello, Teacher Ray here. I'm back to answer another How Well Group Class teaching question from you, the teacher. This episode features a pretty good question about tic tac toe alternatives when there is an odd number of students in your classroom. Here's the question. I have been trying to be more creative, but I find if I add a game like tic-tac-toe, I run short on time. That's not my question, smiley face. Tic-tac-toe seems to be working well if I have two or four students. But what if there are only three in the class? What other games can I try? Hmm. Any of you that attended or reviewed the recording of my seminar, Using Creativity to Enhance the Student Experience, probably remember my use of tic-tac-toe as an example of making games relevant to the lesson. So I really appreciate this question and uh, kind of wish I had thought of it myself before that seminar. <sighs> anyway, after some brainstorming and a bit of uh, online research, I think I've come up with a three-player alternative. Instead of starting out with a three-by-three three grid, make it four-by-four. Four. You'll also need to add a third symbol. A check mark might be the easiest. For pre-made versions of the game that you use like in the background or hold in your hand, you could use colors instead of symbols. Oh, for five students, maybe expand that game board to five by five. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The game is then played much like the basic version, as each player selects a square and uses a strategy to get three in a row while blocking their classmates from doing the same. As with all games, don't forget to make it educational by requiring some sort of lesson-relevant task for the students to earn each turn. You also don't need to finish the game in one go. Make one game last the entire lesson by playing one round at a time. Want to try another game? Maybe something besides tic-tac-toe? How about a game of chance? where the winner is determined by luck rather than skill. For these types of games, you can utilize the magic stars provided by the AC or use those secondary rewards popular in one-on-one -on -one lessons like candies or ice cream scoops. A game that anyone can set up with materials they have at hand is a drawing game. No, not that kind of drawing. This kind. Ah where you draw from a hat. Simply write out the tasks on scraps of paper. Include the reward, fold them up, and toss them into the hat, or a jar, or even a colorful gift bag. These tasks should be relevant to the lesson in some way, like questions that help build understanding sentence making, vocabulary practice, or even something that involves movement. To play, simply draw a task from the hat. Hmm. One task per student. Uh, no peeking. <laughs> the order of the draw is up to you. I either use activity scores um, or I go by which student has the most stars and work my way down. There are many, many ways to incorporate games of chance, like spinning wheels, dice, or cards. One teacher I know uses a homemade version of the Plinko game. <laughs> Doesn't that look like fun? Or you can make your own game by using numbered envelopes, gift bags, or even paper plates. That's not all, of course. But that's all for now, because now it's time for a wrap up. <laughs> In this episode, I provided some tic-tac-toe game alternatives for three student or other odd number GCs. As Howell GC teachers, 
We all know the value games have for engagement and motivation. So I want to take a moment to thank this teacher for taking the time to submit this question. Can you spare a moment to help out your fellow teachers? Click on the survey link below to submit your valuable question to Ask Teacher Ray. See you next time. Goodbye.